hello welcome this is my channel um this is my story no <laughs> okay welcome to psych sync i'm michelle sorry miha okay see i don't even know i have like five names <sighs> okay welcome to psych sync this is a channel for psychology advice from a non-psychologist so please 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 don't take my advice in place of a psychologist's advice um however do take my advice among a subsection of advice that you could happen upon in your daily life however i do have an undergrad in psychology so with that being said take my advice at like 60 percent. you know like not as, as a trained clinician however as an open heart my goal is to bring um is to bring psychology to the masses <laughs> i mean it's already happening but like i just feel like i have accumulated so much knowledge and i have such an interest in psychology but the theories and the experiments and like how to actually use this information that i need a place to just literally blurt it out that's how the name psych sink came to be because it's literally like a kitchen sink of just everything that i feel like i need to express to you so that we can all better our lives if so that we can all so that we can all better our lives accordingly so that we can all better our lives accordingly that's how it works also psych sync likes to synchronize with psychology not a bad fun you know what i'm saying now you're here because you saw the candle or it's really pretty or you're interested in how to be happier okay great question right Great question. So many answers to that. If you're really feeling sad, please go see a clinical psychologist. Now, I don't just mean sad. I mean, you can't function. You can't do things that you used to be able to do. You don't think in the same way. You're confused about um, who you are, all these kinds of things. Most people should be seeing clinical psychologists. Most people should be in therapy, at least talk therapy. Most people should be combating their loneliness with somebody to help them through discourse or cbt which is cognitive behavioral therapy there are so many strategies out there to make you feel better and the world can be a very lonely place so if you have the means go see a psychologist that's all uh if you don't have the means stay here no that's not the answer if you don't have the means i'm sorry the system is broken it's really broken there are not enough psychologists to go around and if they do go around they're very expensive and the government doesn't think that mental health actually belongs in the same spectrum as physical health even though mental psychosomatic disorders come from the brain and stress kills but other than that um back to the thing the core here so you want to be happier right there is one surefire way of doing it so i came across this method of being happier with just by doing one thing um, and it works really, 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 really well. And actually, Michelle Obama mentioned it in one of her conferences. She was at a conference with Julia Roberts. I don't know how that pairing came to be uh, in its nascent stage. I don't know how that even happened. But she was mentioning how you should plan your joy. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. So what does that mean? That means when you look at your calendar, you're looking at your week, and you're considering where can I slot in the thing that's gonna make me really happy to do. Where can I put an activity where I'm gonna really gain control over my week and my schedule beyond just task-based performance that sometimes this culture in North America forces us to get involved in. How am I gonna gain control over my own life? In a way that's very manageable and it makes sense. Look at your calendar, figure out what you like to do, plan it into your calendar. Now, this thing is, it doesn't mean you have to, you know, find your next hobby or, you know, do what everyone else is doing and like go to the gym, whatever, because everyone's like out here trying to promote all these things. No, this is unique to you. If you like to go to the gym, go to the gym. If you like to bike ride, bike ride. If you like to talk to friends, schedule that into your calendar. If you like to get your nails done, schedule that into your calendar. These moments when you're going to genuinely do what you like to do, you're going to reorganize yourself, you're going to re-kind of habilitate yourself with these, within these pockets of, of curated activities that are unique to you, you're going to actually re-stabilize yourself for the remaining week. 
and you're going to be able to bring a better version of yourself into the rest of your week. And that's how effective this is. Now, I would take Michelle Obama's advice and I would jack it up on steroids by introducing personality theory. So the big five, I don't know if you guys have heard, but it's the most reliable personality test out there. So it's more reliable and valid than Myers-Briggs and uh, you know all these other things like the PI and index and the big five concerns five traits of personality that all belong on a spectrum. And you can remember it through the acronym CANU, which stands for conscientiousness, agreeableness, neuroticism, openness, and extroversion. And on all these five traits, we land on the spectrum. So for example, let's take extroversion. On one side of the spectrum, you have high extroversion. On the other side of the spectrum, you have low extroversion, alternatively named introversion. High extroversion means you like to engage with people, you like a lot of social gatherings, you like um, to just be with a lot of people all the time, so you're very open to people. Low extroversion kind of means the opposite. You're not open to people, you don't like spending time with people, you're more like interested in spending time by yourself, for the most part. <clears throat> that is the dimension. Now, if you take a look at the activities that you're interested in doing, for example, let's take mine, music. I like to really create music, and that's how, that's where, that's my joy, so I schedule it into my week every Saturday. I combine that activity with the facets of my personality to kind of make that activity even more suitable for me personally. So if I'm high on extroversion, I'll bring in my bandmate and we'll create music together. And that makes the whole music creation process that much more similar to who I am as a person. This is a really effective method because if you think about it, you can curate the activity so it's perfectly geared towards what you like to do. I mean, what more do you want, you know? You can also argue that within the activity, you have facets of your personality already being expressed. For example, I'm high on, you know, openness. So creating music for me is a great experience because <clears throat> I usually don't know where a song is going to come from. I don't know where it's going to go. I get to create new melodies and new, new, you know, lyrics. And that caters to the openness part of my personality. Your activity can be inherently geared towards who you are as a person. But you can also enhance it by adding other factors of your personality into the activity to make it even that more enjoyable so that you can get rejuvenated for the remaining week. That's my number one tip. It's worked really effectively for me and from what I can tell for other people as well. Um, so please let me know if you know, you've tried this before or if you're going to try it or if you absolutely hate this video, let me know. Um, thanks so much and take care. Bye.